Well, a very good morning. My name is Elijah to the Ogmanoi. My appearance here today does not mean that the situation has gotten any better, but rather escalating and more cases were announced and confirmed last evening of COVID-19. Well, on the breakfast meeting this morning, we're going to be discussing um, how COVID-19 or coronavirus has affected uh, the sectors, different sectors, the banking sector, but mainly putting focus on the education sector. Um, over 5 million um, students were suspended, schools were suspended. So right now they're seated at home and uh, probably watching. So we do expect them to benefit from this conversation on how to combat coronavirus while they are at home and see how best we can resume business as normal. In studio today, I have Miss Barbara Kasekende, who is the head corporate social investment at Stanbic Bank. You're welcome to the NBS studios. Thank you so much, Elijah. Um, to start with, um, Stanwick Bank has carried on. They, they, you, you're taking on the meant what to go on. You're, you're taking on the duty to go and see that uh, coronavirus mm. and the impact can best be mitigated. Mm. And um, uh, you have different programs. Mm. Uh, how has coronavirus affected you as in the banking sector to start with? <laughs> I think we've seen how coronavirus has affected Uganda as a whole, and we won't get so much into that topic. But coming from the programs that we handle under our corporate social responsibility um, sector, um, our focus is education. Okay, So all our programs are within the schools that we operate in. Pre-COVID, we had done a lot of our programs in the schools and they were very successful. Mm. And then COVID happened. But if COVID happens, does that mean that the programs have to stop? No, it doesn't mean that the programs have to stop. It just means we have to think of doing these programs differently. Mm -hmm. Yes, the students are home. But look at this. We have over 5 million students sitting at home. Mm. What better way to reach them than through such mediums and portals? Mm. And it has only been COVID. COVID from a very negative perspective. Mm. The Stanbic Bank I, National yeah. School Championship 2020, mm. what entails of it? This is a program that was already underway before COVID-19 yes. uh, outbreak took the world to the knees. Okay, tell you just a bit about um, National Schools Program. This is going to be the fifth year. It's actually the fifth year we are running it. So we have affected over, mm. in a positive way, we have reached over 100,000 students. We have reached over 200 institutions, schools, particularly in secondary school, because the program lies in secondary schools, mm. with a focus on skilling out of the classroom, and we focus on life skills, entrepreneurship and financial literacy mm -hmm. and what we are doing here is we're trying to tell our children it is not about the grade you can do so much more mm -hmm. hey look at the situation mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. what can you do differently mm -hmm. so in a nutshell that's what the national schools program mm -hmm. is all about we cannot dif dispute the fact that uh, with the various developments mm -hmm. um, right now or even before Uganda's biggest economic predicament was unemployment yes uh, with <laughs> over 80 percent of young people mm. seeking jobs mm. and have nothing to do rather seated at home or mm. loitering on the streets mm. um, you tend to put your focus on creating jobs mm -hmm. uh, what different avenues are you taking is it the industrial sector is it the ICT sector is it the service sector where are you putting emphasis no actually uh, with the national schools program as you see most people who are trying to find solutions to unemployment focus a lot on the youth when we talk about the youth you're talking about between 20 and 29 years old I'm just giving you just a rough estimate here now we're talking of an age group between 13 and 20 years old mm. that is the high school age because we believe by the time you're 20 years old you've kind of made up your mind mm. so between 13 to 20 years old, we start instilling that knowledge at that time and showing them that you can do a lot more than just the classroom because we focus a lot on the grade and we forget that skilling is very critical. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing differently, we are taking it out of just the universities and all those other institutions and going younger because we believe the younger a child is, the easier it is for them to actually start getting the right mindset. The thing here that we have to notice mm -hmm. is mindset. Mm -hmm. The right mindset change mm -hmm. for them to be able to create create opportunities for others. It doesn't matter how young you are. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing differently. Mm -hmm. But however, some some people within the same age bracket that you think is youngest mm -hmm. get into the world earlier mm -hmm. and actually start working or surviving on their own mm -hmm. within the same age. Mm -hmm. Or at least 20 or 19, 18, mm -hmm. they're already practicing. Some mm -hmm. What are the, some of the survival skills or life skills that uh, 
uh, you're focusing on to instill in them. So um, what happens right now is um, most of our students, if you, um, you've gone to Ugandan schools, 90% mm. uh, of the time our students are told that you can only do so much. You can't go beyond what we tell you you can, where we tell you you can go. Mm. And what we do is, in this program, we try to tell them that you are so much more than you think you are. Mm. So most of these um, students do not think they can make it. And I mm. can tell you already, and you'll be seeing it when we run the success stories, mm. once you tell a child that you can't do it, they can. Mm. Once you tell them they can't, mm. they will not do it. Mm. So one thing I want to focus here heavily is mindset and let me tell you how critical that is mm. because a child when a child is told that you will not be able to do this it can't happen this way i am your teacher i am your mother mm. i am your father mm. they will not do it because mm. you're my elder Let, let's get the background so, of the program um, yeah when did it start and how much have you covered so far <laughs> we started in 2016 with 32 schools mm. um it was very very skeptical then and it started as a debate championship mm. and then we realized the debate championship was really good but we realized about you know when we talk about unemployment that we had to refocus now okay and the, we we can do so much more so we started with 32 schools went up to 60 schools to 72 schools this year we are in a hundred schools we're talking mm. about 60,000 students that we have actually reached so far and over 200 teachers and remember this championship is not only for the students it is for the teachers as well because an empowered teacher mm -hmm. goes a long way mm -hmm. how empowering the teacher then? oh the teachers were empowering them to think we are not thinking of government at Yambi anymore mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so we're trying to tell our teachers guys you can do so much more than what you think you can don't wait for the salary mm -hmm. so we are trying to help them start entrepreneurial projects and again like I said you'll see those uh, success stories it's amazing how mm -hmm. some of these teachers can get out of their shells and actually create something for themselves mm -hmm. so yes on the teachers on that in the teacher's perspective we are teaching them to actually make other forms of income mm -hmm. other than the salary they get it, from government yes thank you barbara well, it's yes. very easy to talk about skilling mm. and educating uh, the young people mm. um in the context of creating jobs for mm. them and um, at the end of the day nothing practical has actually been done mm. um what practical things incubation centers um startups mm. have you put in place to see that uh, uh, young people get hands-on skills so what we've done right now, already let me talk about in regards to what you talked about the incubator. Sunbi Bank has mm. actually an incubator center in Kololo. Mm. But of course right now we can't do anything with it at the moment. Though we will be having a lot of online platforms as well. Where we have our young entrepreneurs that can actually come and learn hands-on skills without um, having to pay for it. It's completely free. But for our young entrepreneurs, I'm talking about our young entrepreneurs in the program. We have what we call a post-national schools program where we actually do follow up on them they mm. have mentors we give them some ex depending on how well you've been doing we actually help them even as a bank to put some more into their businesses to make sure that they survive mm. um, but we also attach mentors to them because any business needs somebody to help them survive as Very well true. and also keep them going mm. also for all those businesses that have been started mm. this year and I know we will get there COVID, I know it's here, but we believe we will get there. <laughs> um, so will. this year, mm. the championship is going to be two-tiered. We're going to have a champion. One part of the championship is going to be for those who have the business ideas, who, who believe that they can make things happen, and mm. you know mm. they're going to show us what they can do. And for those businesses already on ground, we're going to have like a dragon's den thing going. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to come prove to us instead of in, in front of a set of judges that your business is worth it for more investment, wow. and then we'll invest in it. Mm. So those are some of the ways that we are trying to make sure that this program just doesn't happen and people get a cup and go mm -hmm. but it actually sustains those businesses that have been started both in the schools and also the personal businesses mm -hmm. for both the students and the teachers okay so um, yes. what do we look at in reward for the stand big back national schools championship 2020 it, so it's just like to also uh, draw a line you're mm -hmm. just focusing on schools yes Main, mainly schools yes not, not those that are outside schools for now, the National Schools Championship is in schools, mm -hmm. yes, particularly. Because when you talk about a school community, you get to reach more okay, okay. children mm -hmm. uh, uh, that way. Versus um, other programs, but we do have other youth programs as well mm -hmm. that we handle. We have one called uh, the Leo, through the Leo Africa Institute, actually for young entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And I know some of your presenters here have been through it, so it's, a, it's very exciting to see that. Mm -hmm. But we do have those. But the reason why National Schools is very critical, because we believe that is the most critical mm -hmm. age gap. Mm -hmm. And that is the age gap we are tending to miss. And focusing more on the 
20 plus and leaving this huge age gap. Mm. Remember, 80% of our population, actually now it's 85% of our population, mm. we're a very young country, mm. is under 30. But the biggest percentage is in that age gap. So mm. if we don't do something about it now, then we are, we are losing the mark. Mm. Yeah. Uh, how big is the investment we're talking about for, for the winner of the championship? So for the winner of the championship, they get a fully a fully fledged trip to South Africa. On top of that, they receive a hundred dollars per day for the six days that they're going to spend in South Africa. It's mm -hmm. a fully paid trip. On top of that, they get a um, this little gadget that you had here. It's an iPad. Mm -hmm. The teachers get 1.5 million shillings. The school gets a 20 million solar um, energy power. But there are so many gifts across the lines. Okay. Everyone is a winner. However, for the championship, the big thing we try to stress: it is not about the gifts. Mm -hmm. It is about the skill that you learn and what you're learning from it Absolutely. it has the gift is lovely it mm. is a you know a cherry on the on the cake mm -hmm. but really it is about what you're learning from the championship yes, yes. yes. amazing rewards right there yes. but still um, something has been left out yes for the innovation because mm. um, it's uh, they're showcasing their ideas yes, I presume are. yes um, and they expect you to help them bring their startup to mm. fruition or mm. To, mm. Uh, to to see the light of the day mm. for, for, for the startup for itself alone, what investment are you going to put in? So what happens for the startup? That's why it's a competition, because unfortunately you can't help everybody. Yes, um, yeah. But right now, just to let you know, actually, for the winner, to yes, yeah. at least oh, oh no, for the winners for the startup. Like I said, mm. depending on what you do. Let me give you an example. What our winner for 2017 was Mary Hill Girls. Uh, secondary school. Mm. Mary Hill Girls Secondary School started a kind of like a circle, you'd call it, like an investment circle for its students. Mm. The circle has grown exponentially beyond our wildest dreams. The students have taken it to another level. Mm. So for every year that you show us that you're actually making an effort to grow your business, we will invest in it. For as every year. So, so what happens, there continuous is continuous monitoring, monitoring mm. heavy monitoring. Mm. And anyway, I, mm. we are, you would say, like the godparent of these businesses. Mm. You can't leave, uh, you know, your child hanging. So we ensure that we follow up on all our businesses as much as possible. But now Mary Hill yeah. is a fully fledged business. They have their solar power. They have their laptops. They're, they're running as they should, at mm. least now. As we are backing away, mm. we know that business can stand. Okay. So those are some of the things that we do to ensure you, that You bring in the aspect done. of um, environmental conservation. Yes. And go green yes. programs. Yes. Um, what direction are you taking? Because being the part of Africa, we have quite a number of green. I and know. We focus on the green. But the green is disappearing heavily. Um, what we've realized is when you look at uh, where we are going today, actually COVID maybe has helped now that Mother Earth is kind of, <laughs> mm. you know, having a rest at the moment. But what we've realized is Uganda being as green as it is, it's not as green as you think. So we said, fine, how can we come in as a bank to support this initiative? We partnered with Roofings Group, and what we did is we are providing fruit trees in all the schools that we visit, mm -hmm. and not only the secondary schools. Mm -hmm. We visit close to 300 schools every year, mm -hmm. and we are going to give all the schools 15,000 fruit trees. Mm -hmm. Because we believe tree planting is a communal. Mm -hmm. It's a communal initiative. If I go and plant a tree on the side of the road, I guess I will go and cut it because it is not in where it should be. Mm -hmm. But at least if I give a school a hundred seedlings, I can follow up on that and find that mini forest there. Very Plus, true. it is not just a forest. Mm -hmm. These are fruit trees. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the kids can also feed off them. For, for, organi for organizations there, that, that uh, big organizations out there mm -hmm. that don't pay attention to corporate social responsibilities, <laughs> yeah. what, what do you think is the role of corporate social responsibilities to society? You, you, you Standing Bank is looking at uh, mm -hmm. two different aspects that can improve society. That's mm -hmm. the environment as well as job creation. Mm -hmm. As an organization, we're here for the people we serve. Mm -hmm. If I am making profits off you and I'm not giving back, why am I here? So my, my appeal to all organizations, in fact, COVID is here. This should be your first step to give back to community. Mm. We make money, it's beautiful, but it's because of the people around us mm. that we are successful. Mm. I appeal to all organizations, if you've never done any projects, this is the time to stand out and do something. Mm. Because we <laughs> owe this yeah. to you. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, on a good year, uh, how much does Stand Big Back invest in corporate social responsibility? <laughs> We invest, I should say my budget is always at least 1% of the profits of Stanbic Bank. So 1% of the profits of Stanbic Bank 
go towards uh, corporate social responsibility. Thank you very much. And that's much. what we spend, yes. Thank you, Barbara <laughs> Kasekende, for speaking to Thank us. Thank you, Elijah. On <laughs> it's been the breakfast meeting, a discussion with the head corporate social investment of Stan Big mm -hmm. Bank uh, discussing quite a number of issues and uh, as they put focus on job creation but as well as environmental conservation. My name is Elijah Triagmanawe and the breakfast meeting comes back shortly. Mm -hmm.